thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I rise in support of this motion this morning. And it's um, uh, as a as a, someone who was born uh, not long before the uh, man first step, stepped foot on the on the moon. Um, I remember growing up as a young lad when uh, the space race was still very much uh, active, and um, I remember my parents telling me about the fear that uh, that Australians experienced um, when the Soviet Union put uh, Yuri Gagarin as the first man into orbit. And I remember my mum and dad uh, telling me as a young fellow how much even Australians, as cocooned as we were uh, back in those days, how much uh, fear there was about Russians being in space. And then time moved on and then uh, NASA put John Glenn uh, into orbit in uh, Friendship 7 on the 20th of February 1962, and, a, and the United States joined uh, what is now known as the space race. Um, a little later in that year, on the 12th of September 1962, um, President Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, gave a tremendous speech at Rice University in Houston when he announced to the world that by the end of that decade, uh, NASA, uh, and in fact the United States, sought to put man on the moon. And there's a, a terrific quote from that speech that he gave at Rice University when he said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things not because they are easy, but because they are hard, because that goal will serve to organise and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we are willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one which we intend to win, and the others too. Mr Deputy Speaker, that one paragraph from President Kennedy's speech um, really embodies the, um, uh, the US, uh, their intentions to uh, put man on the moon and indeed their whole space campaign. But it, it does more than that. It embodies uh, the human condition. It's a bit like, you know, why did you climb the mountain? Well, because it was there. For millennia, human beings have looked at challenges and said, um, let's do this. Let's climb that mountain. Let's um, go to the moon. Let's do things that will make us stretch beyond our, our, our comfort zones. That is what makes us different as human beings. And whilst admittedly we're a little bit late to the party, um, there is a, a tremendous pride that Australians can take in the work that we will now be doing uh, in space over the coming years. And I want to really uh, congratulate uh, the government and indeed uh, Minister Andrews for the work and the leadership that she has demonstrated to, to um, really grasp the nettle, not because it's easy, but because it is hard. And when you look at all of the, the uh, space exploration that has been undertaken by the various nations, whether it is John Glenn in one of the Mercury uh, rockets or the Apollo programs, the space shuttles and, more recently, uh, the unmanned travel that has been going on. What really amazes me today in 2019 is that uh, when we first, the Americans first put man on the moon, the computer uh, that they used uh, on board that spaceship on Apollo 11 was, had nowhere near the computing power of a mobile phone or even, I'm told, uh, an Apple Watch. 
What amazes me, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, is the sheer brilliance of the men and the women. The member's time has expired. Oh. I thank the member for Fisher.